Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Kyle's Daily Bad Words of Wisdom. Uh, today is day four of uh, self-help week, we could call it. I'm trying to give you some tips to survive the world and uh, better yourselves, along with uh, some WTF, some facts. So, uh, in celebration of Halloween, coming up. Because some things are laterally helpful across the board, these tips may help you in your daily daily life, but we'll give her a shot. And just in case, here are 10 tips on how to survive a zombie apocalypse. Number one, tips clearing the room. There's nothing worse than stepping into a room only to be set upon by a horde of brain-eating zombies. A team of four armed shooters can easily clear a room if all stand against the nearest wall, one body on each corner, and two in the middle. This position proves optimal to quickly dispatch a room full of the reanimated. Never turn your back. Shambling, walking slowly, isn't just for zombies. Three live humans can stand with their back together and carefully rotate through the room, ensuring that their eyes are always facing forward so no one falls victim to a surprise attack. Let your friend have your back. Number three, the fine line. For those lucky enough to amass a relatively large army of live humans, the fine line is the best way to fend off a roving zombie horde. Simply form two lines of armed persons, one person in the front and of the other, with the front line shoots while the back line holds, while the front line runs out of ammo, the back line steps in to replace while the front um, pulls back and... Uh, reloads so ensuring that we don't shoot all your load at once zombies are not your least of your worries it's bad enough that you have to deal with zombified masses if you are fearless uh, feel no pain and greatly outnumbered human beings but perhaps even more deadly are the humans who simply cannot cope with the new world order it's best to keep a psychologist on hand who could maybe identify and help to subdue each person before they embark on a murderous rampage, which could be more deadly than uh, perhaps a zombie. So I could identify someone in your group that's portraying uh, some very bad symptoms here. Number five, choose your weapon wisely. Not all weapons work for all folks. And the uh, trended zombie fighting ornaments aren't always best. Um, when in doubt, melee weapons are a fine tool against the undead. But think twice before picking up a giant hammer. Are satisfying and it is satisfying to sm smash some skulls. Though, be weary of a hammer creates a sizable arch which gives plenty of time to nibble on armpits. So, uh, zombie advisors advise that you invest in a machete, which is cheap, lightweight, and um, a neat separation of zombie's head from its body. As for ranged weapons, you would want to consider uh, ditching the side-off shotgun you found for a bolt-action rifle which are more powerful and accurate. Throughout, um, and ammunition restrictions for uh, close-range weapons are going to be in greater supply. Ammunition-wise. Windows, number six. Windows are not your friend. Zombies have a nasty habit of crashing through glass windows. So, it's best to choose a hideout with a high ground level and few windows as possible. Steer clear of malls, coffee shops, banquet outlets, 
and um, so you should favor uh, Costco or a BJ's or Sam's Clubs, any large warehouse where you could find yourself trapped. Um, if if you do find yourself trapped in your house, it's best to uh, go for the high tall it high tail it to the attic, which. Um, Zombies will have trouble. It'll be easier to reach such places like the uh, basement. Might be uh, spelling trouble there. So, number seven. Don't get stuck with a gas guzzler. If you're traveling with a group, you may consider fleeing by SUV or minivan. But be wary of gas guzzlers and rollover rats. So cars that you're going to get all get crazy with it is a literal killer if you're traveling alone it is best to um your high mileage vehicle like a dirt bike or even yet a, a bicycle so it's powered by your own power okay and uh fight world war z with tnt they say if you can obviously you're going to use whatever you can get your hands on but be wary uh, using dynamite around the undead whoop, is a tricky proposal. The right amount of explosives can blow them to bits, but you might cremate yourself in the process. It's better to strave off uh, these uh, corpses with a controlled burn. But demolition experts warn, make sure the fire, you can control the fire. A raging wildfire can prove more deadly than the zombie itself. And number nine, animals, friend or foe. Animals can be an invaluable ally in the end of the world, but the zombie infection could render any more hazardous than help. If a zombie plague is viral, it can infect any living cell, causing even the most inhumane animals to inhabit flesh craving symptoms so you got to think about it what would you rather fight an undead human or an undead uh lion you know what i mean stay away from the zoo your dog dogs just run up and lick everything too so okay and number 10 finally suit up perhaps the best way to prepare for the end of days is to raise from their graves is to assemble the perfect zombie outfit, fighting attire. Avoid brain spraying black by wearing goggles and covering your face with um, non-punctual materials. Use uh, plate mail, obviously, if possible, or leather. Could create a bite-proof suit. Kevlar gloves provided to some industrial workers can be worn as a protection of your fingers and uh, impales your sleeves, allowing you to fend off zombies by holding up your forearms. Riot shields would awfully, obviously um, add a layer of protection, making it easy to smash domes as well, too. So, uh, there you go. So... Hopefully these tips could maybe help you uh, protect your family and your loved ones. So there you go. And happy Halloween, everyone. All right, here we go now. We are back to some WTF, which just jumped around a little bit. That was terrifying as this. Here we go. This gentleman right here, Billy Milligan, a criminal had life so disturbing that his mind fractured into at least 24 personalities. For each one of these personalities, his speech pattern was different, he had an accent were different, and he sat in a different way in this chair. Completely being a different person. Elephants rarely get cancer because they have 40 copies of genes that code for the tumor suppression protein P53. Humans only have two. And if 
1970, I would not want to live in Cambodia. People were killed for being academic or merely wearing glasses. So that's not good. And finally, right here, be careful when you're clowning around. Cyprus, an ancient Athonian philosopher, died from laughter from his own joke. So hopefully somebody else got it too. Take it easy, everybody. Thanks for joining. See you next time. Peace.